let's not forget what we come here for. We come here first and foremost for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father Abba, Lord God Almighty. Um, I'm not really going. Last time I got really carried away. I, it was actually a pre-planned video. I done my homework and I really wanted to give the essence of Psalm and King David and how God always keeps his promises and this to show you um, the viewer and our subscriber my point of view on Jeremy Channel 333 with the way King David how he ran his kingdom how he treated um, his kingdom and how God loved that and and um, of course you know his unfaltering faith where he he wasn't even afraid to stand up to Goliath a, a big accomplished champion who slayed many and was just pretty much a monster a big old a big old man and by definition a giant and uh he had brothers too uh and that city like I was discussing that city of Gath it was found maybe four or five years ago in, in an archaeological discovery um, very interesting if you Google it and look it up. Hey, Nala. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> uh, she loves to be petted and get attention. But uh, my thoughts right now, um, I've seen a couple things that got my um, creative juices flowing and got me interested in having a subject to talk about. Of course, however, I'm not going to make this too long. Uh, please forgive me. I, I, it took me forever. It took me over a day to get that that hour video <laughs> uploaded. Um, there's bonuses for them long videos because you can get a lot of content in them and a better message. But a lot of people don't have that time too. But then for those of you who do make your time, and I like to say, I always try to make it worth it and hope it's worth it. Um, but anyways... Two thoughts are on my mind now. I've seen something about where uh, they was discussing, uh, I think Mark Dice was talking a lot about, um, he's a very good, renowned writer in California, and he does his own videos. But uh, he was talking about how the rise of Satanism has been with this country for really a long time, about four decades, or maybe even five, where it really is just super grown. Um you talking about Antoine LaVey and the church, the satanic church in San Francisco. And um, a lot of atheists like to always point it out that they didn't try to deny that there was an actual devil, that they just believed in uh, what the devil stood for. They like to, to do as thou wilt, you know, just to be able to do anything they please and not believe have morals. Um, however, that's just, uh, I believe that was just a facet. Now, I don't have any concrete proof in that, so it's speculation. I always emphasize that if I don't think it's fact, but it could possibly be fact. That's what speculation is. But nonetheless, you're not saying, making a statement that that's um, a true statement. Um, you're just saying that it could be. But <clears throat> one of the evidence that I would suggest to it was some of the things I heard that uh, they do, like, one time they took a, a dismembered leg from uh, the hospital or whatever, or uh, I guess it was someone who died or whatever, and they took the, the cadaver's leg and they feasted on it, um, cooked it and feasted on it or something. I mean, just silly things like that. But um, when you look at the surmise, you might as well be saying you're worshiping the devil, whether you believe or not, when you look at that anyway, so they still lose the argument. No, no, Nala. That's not a chew toy. <laughs> she loves that cord, that little white thing on. The, I want to take that piece of tape off there. It comes with it. Yeah. I know. Her likes to play, don't her? Tell everybody. Look. You're on camera. <laughs> little stinker. I love you. Well, um, well anyways... Do as thou will. You might if if you're gonna do that, you might as well. Uh, you know, it's just as bad because um, basically you're doing what the devil wants you to do. You know, he don't even have to lay his trick, his treat to give you the trick. 
I had a, uh, I found a good search sign that I ran into out right here around here where I live near Cold Grove, Ohio, and uh, they had a sign about the devil. Uh, and it was about Halloween to how the devil likes to give his trick, his treat, his treats, but then along comes the trick. And I and I posted that and thine will be done. I uh, always call it the mother ship, the mother Hubbard, uh, because uh, we ha- we're over five hundred members strong now. And um, just an awesome group, and um, I have a lot of good people there, and some you know, some like to to post beautiful posts, and um, you know those are valued members. You know uh, that's what it's all about is sharing our love for Jesus Christ first and foremost, and um, His glory, and you know just sharing Scripture and good sound stuff. You know is just a wonderful thing, but. Um, well, anyways, get back to what I'm getting to, okay? Um, with this whole following of this, and uh, Mark Goss was going on about how they start showing symbolism a lot more. They'd cover one eye up, they'd throw up the horns, a lot of the celebrities. And uh, I thought it was very interesting. He's like, it doesn't mean that they were members of the uh, little secret clubs, secret societies. Now, whether or not, not, now, whether or not, not all of them are, but he claimed, like he believed that he didn't think there was many, many or if any in it. But they was just trying to get on the bus, you know, the van wagon. But I'm kind of confident there's probably a few of them that actually, at least, or uh, have some affiliation, which maybe know someone or actually in their own little secret societies. There's so many of them, and uh, but anyways, Job one is the th- biggest thing. A lot of people say, I have something that Satan doesn't want anyone to know. And Dear Lord Jesus, Father Abba, before I give this, I pray for your powerful protection. And uh, I thank you that you uh, always protect me from the wiles and the temptations and the, the snares and the traps, as King David always says, from the enemy and from the devil. In your holy blessed name, I do humbly pray, Lord Jesus, you reign forever and ever. And amen. Uh, well, anyways, Job 1 demonstrates not only is the devil cunning and clever, and I hate to give him any credit than what is due because he hates humanity. He hates us. So we're, we're instructed to love, but a true Christian would really have a hard time having any type of anything for that being because he hates us so much and he sends his minions out his other demons or fallen angels, if you will, to do his bidding and stuff. And, and their, their whole plan is just to ruin you, especially if you love God and truth and, you know, you're what is the equivalent of a Christian or a true believer, however you want to go by claim. But in Job 1, it talks about he uses a windstorm and stuff. He controls stuff like that, you know, like tornadoes. He's not uh, something to be messed with. I've heard some over the years say, oh, he's limited. Well, he is limited. He's nothing near God. You know, Lord Jesus is so much more powerful and so much more. His ways are higher. He's the glory and the power forever. All glory and honor and power is his. He is the one true and living God, and he is risen. Um, The devil is a created being. He's a created angel from God. Now, the Lord really um, wants to demonstrate to us throughout the ages, I strongly believe this, why evil exists and uh, how important, the most important thing is, is how important it is to believe in His truth and His glory and understand why you never want to tamper with Pandora's box, which what's really in the big secret, what's in that Pandora's box is that. It's just that it's evil. How evil uh, really can just destroy. And that's what uh, Pandora's box is. It's just a big thing of destruction. And that's what the devil brings. He wants to kill you. He wants to, you know, uh, make you miserable and just take from you. And now to get into uh, the other parts here. And and another thing is, you know, they call him the false accuser. I think it's in Jude that gets revealed. He goes before. Well, I don't know if he goes before the throne, I can't, but Michael, the Archangel Michael's there, and he rebukes Satan over, uh, over these 
over Mo Moses' body, railing accusations the devil was making. He's the false accuser. But that's how he operates. You know, uh, he'll bring the treats in order to bring the big trick at the end. And um, he doesn't care about you or me or, or anything. Now, there's a lot of them out there that's deceived in these pure uh, Luciferians and stuff. They want to believe in a demiurge and they want to believe that he came in and he's the one that's created things and stuff. He's the, he is the false light, you see. Um, he brings a different type of light with him, but God give him that. But um, God shines the light through him. He's able to transform himself into, still into that uh, angel of light. So he's not always walking around uh, with horns coming from the back of his head to the front and wearing his cape and, and uh, brown with a cane. Uh, I haven't seen the front view of him, and I don't desire it. But anyways, he's not always in that form. He he is... Um, like he, he can also appear as an angel of light. And he, he's a master of deception. He deceived one-third of the angels. He deceived Adam and Eve. So don't think he cannot fool you. And uh, that now that's going to demonstrate something else in what he and his camp loves to do, his his minions and his uh, demons. Like his uh, Another thing they like to do, especially for non-believers and stuff, uh, they want to use your temple and your body for an indwelling. And, you know, in the Bible, he, they just demonstrate this where they was uh, in a man that was possessed and the and Jesus uh, ordered them to leave. And they recognized instantly Jesus was God in the flesh. They knew who Jesus was. And they begged him that they might be able to go into the swine. And so the Lord permitted them to go to the swine and then they violently ran off the hill, off the cliff and into the ocean. So apparently wherever this was, it was near the ocean. But uh, so they bring these bad spirits upon you. And Christians are not exempt totally. But we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have Father Abba, the Most High, to uh, make it where, because we the Holy Spirit in dwelling, praise the Lord, it, he brought the comforter. You know, so they can't really... They uh they have to have permission and stuff, and some will say, "Oh, they don't." But I believe very strongly they do, and I don't think uh, they can do anything that the Lord won't like. Then the Lord wouldn't permit that stuff. I believe that with all my heart and soul. And might uh, if you're a child of God, you will not be overtaken. You will not be overcome. It's written in the Word. But there are a small percentage out there, and there are people that actually do uh get um. Uh, possessed so you know there's cases of exorcisms now do i believe every exorcism case was legit no i i mean i believe that there, there are some of these professionals right that some of them were just people that had mental, bad mental illness but there are some and they just know too much in detail about the ages and the plan you know and how much they hate america because america is a free nation um Malachi Martin is a good research. Malachi Martin's a good research for that, by the way. If you want to get into detail and get more information about it, and you, you'll see as I have clearly, you know, how this really works. But we're going to go into what becomes with some. And, um, but see, now Christians, they can't, uh, I know with all my heart, soul, and might, because the Lord holds us in his powerful right hand. It says he cannot be removed. He is the most high and he's the most powerful. So it cannot be removed. Once we are his, we're his. They cannot take us away from him. But that doesn't mean that we don't allow spirits. Now, spirits are different than possession. And the spirits come into being worldly. And, uh, you know, I try to, whenever I watch movies which are very worldly to remind myself in that mind frame and say it that it first of all it is just a movie and they're actors but also that i can use it as a study and an observation uh for uh what known what's separate 
from from the world and what's separate from being godly. And um, but there's certain movies I will not watch. I won't watch stuff about Ouija boards, and I'm not a big fan of anything with witchcraft and stuff. However, sometimes you will might run a, in a, a, a horror movie that, that doesn't say doesn't advertise it, and something like that may come up in it. But um, I've been pretty fortunate. But I try to read the eulogies or the what do you call it the the summaries of each if it's on a DVD or, or on a CD uh, DVD or something to get a good idea of what I might maybe watching before I watch or if I see a trailer, but. Uh, some things that comes with it is lies and deception, manipulation, and using users. And uh, my thoughts have been really big on that lately because uh, one of the biggest things is is some, once they find you might have some money, they would rather spend your money than theirs and they think you're a fool and try to take you to try to get your money. Uh, when they perfectly have a chance an opportunity. Well, they make more, and some of them would make more money than I do. It's, whether they're retired, like uh, not retired, but well, you can use that as an example, or they just have better jobs. Period. But they would think, you know, hey, well, uh, he's got money now, so let's see what we can do about getting some of that money, and uh, you know, and then you have users that. Uh, are on the opposite sex and the opposite gender like men uh, manipulating women they know have money and vice versa women doing the same thing you know uh, simply because it's free and uh, you can get things with it and uh, it's a shame and um, then you know you have that, that and coming in with some of that stuff is lies you know they'll lie to get their way and some liars are so good they can look at you dead in the eye, straight in the eye, without batting an eyelash, and just basically lie to you straight face. And if you have children, they'll lie to your children. My daughter, she's like 24 now, I believe, or 25. She's, she was born in 97. This November, she'll be either 24 or 25. But anyways... Um, you can look at kids and children, and you can tell if someone's lying to them and deceiving them and telling them bad things about the other parent simply because they don't have to, to uh, put up with their ex or something. So, And then that uh, child may think uh, she not, might actually know better, but then she might form her own opinions, and if... You know, even if you say something that's true, but she don't like to hear it. And that's the way these things work. You know, there, there's users out there, there's liars. But, you know, I can't, I don't sit high enough to judge, but I'm just giving an illustration here and uh, an example of things that I've experienced in my walk and what I know from the word. And, um, but to get to the whole premise of this whole thing is, you know, never forget Ephesians 6, put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation. Um, not participating in, in the, in the sinful lifestyle. And, uh, you know, we cannot be perfect. That's why the Lord did what he did at the cross, but we could thrive and try to do our best and, and be the better person the next day. <clears throat> but with God, it's not all about that. With God, it's about a relationship and having faith in Him, and uh, the biggest thing is, is is praying to Him and asking Him to strengthen you with your, with these things. We are made perfect in our weakness. That's what the Word says, you know. So the Lord, He fights for us, and He'll fight stronger. His love is deep. It's there's no no love, no faithfulness. I'll tell you this time and time again that like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, has for us. Um. The other thing to this whole, the whole premise of this whole, uh, the whole surmise of this whole thing is um, 
hopefully this will send a stern message to uh oh <laughs> bless your little heart nala <laughs> love you love you beautiful yeah hers good um Maybe you are on the brink and you're on the cusp. Maybe you've been following this channel. Or maybe you've just been seeking God diligently and you've stumbled upon this channel because the Lord wanted you to, to get this message. And I always pray I can be a useful vessel and voice and have His blessing and give the truth in my videos. I think I forgot to mention the truth with Him this time, but He knows what my you know what's in my heart. <laughs> and when I'm praying, what I'm asking. Um, praise the Lord. Um. The, hopefully this will will somehow help whatever has been bothering you, whoever this is for, intended for, or um, more than you, uh, others, you know, us, <laughs> however you want to say it. Uh, I'll say it's, I, feel, I have a feeling this is more than just the one, the group, there's, I believe there's more. But, um, yes, stay steadfast, trust in the Lord, pray, read the Word. I need to read the Word more. I have been upping my reading the Word. I can tell a big difference, too. Um, but uh, prayer is so important, and this we can pray, and this is what I do, uh, that the Lord strengthens us in those areas. You know, and um, and if you have never met God, and you've been seeking Him out, John three sixteen and Romans ten are very good passages, and um, Genesis one, Acts one, they're not really salvation passages per se, but those are good ones to get a perception of uh, the way the Lord works on things. But and uh, the old Matthew five, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, but that continues to on through like five, six, and seven. It goes on for a little bit. But uh, it's there's a beautiful. It starts out beautifully. It illustrates a lot about what God loves. Um, but that's thine kingdom come. Now later in Acts, uh, and in in Galatians and Ephesians. We start to learn about grace and um, the Lord told Paul that um, his grace is sufficient. So we need to remember this. It's, it's what he did at Calvary at the cross for us. What he truly did was he saved our souls so that we may have eternal life to spend with him in heaven. And when he brings the new Jerusalem down and so forth. So it's his sacrifice. We're washed by the blood of the lamb. He said he'd see us white as snow to Isaiah. And that's what he did. And um, it's he is doing none of ours. And he works out our salvation with us. Hebrews 13. I always tell everyone this. But praise the Lord. You know, what an awesome God we have. But I'm going to finish here. I say God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for those who, who stayed to the end. And I'm going to have to get ready for work. <laughs>